Hi, I'm Manny. And I'm Cheryl, and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this cute, adorable baby quilt. I'm as cute as I can be. It is part of the Magic Moon Collection, and you can purchase it at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. Now, you can make this as a functional baby quilt or as a really cute wall hanging. Now, this is a weekend project. It won't take you long at all. So let's get started. This baby panel is part of the Magic Moon Collection and you can find it at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. Now because it is 36 by um, 42, you're gonna need to get your cotton batting and the fabric for the back a little bit larger. So you're gonna need that to be 40 by 46 inches. Then for the binding, you're gonna need about a third of a yard. You're gonna cut four strips out that are two and three quarter inches wide. And then I also recommend that you have a walking foot to do your quilting stitches. To cut the binding, you're going to lay your fabric out folded as it was when you purchased it. Selvage edges to selvage edges. Then you're going to take the raw edge and pull it past one of the straight lines on your cutting mat. Also up here at the folded edge, you want to put it straight across on one of the uh, marking lines. Then take your rotary cutting ruler, place the edge of the ruler on the line and make sure you check down here as well as up here that it's on that same line. Then with a rotary cutter, go ahead and cut that edge straight. Then after doing that, we're gonna cut the binding strips two and three quarter inches wide. So I'm gonna move my ruler over two and three quarters so I want to make sure that the lines are the same down at the bottom as up here. And then once you've got it all lined up, then go ahead and cut your first strip out. Now don't move your fabric. You would go over another two and three quarter inches and cut and continue doing that till you have all four binding strips cut. After you've cut your strips, then stack it together with all the selvage edges together and we're going to trim all of those off at once so place one of your lines on your ruler on the edge going this way so that you know you have it cut straight and then just cut those selvages off okay now you're going to stitch the binding strips together so bring front sides together and at the end stitch one quarter inch seam then after you've stitched all your pieces together, then at the ironing board, you wanna press these seams open. Then fold the binding strip in half and press it all the way down the full length. Before you start cutting into your fabric, I recommend that you pre-wash it and dry it. And before doing that, I would do a zigzag stitch on the two raw edges so that your fabric will not unravel during the wash cycle. Then you want to go ahead and line up your ruler and cut the selvage edges off at each end. Then if the other two edges are very uneven, then of course you want to go around and trim that up also. Now we're going to begin layering all the fabric. So here's my cotton batting. So lay it out. Then take your fabric for the back, and I'm using a really soft flannel, but you can use regular cotton fabric. And I'm going to put the back side down against the cotton batting and smooth it all out. And then to make sure it's nice and smooth, I'll take my large cutting rotary cutting ruler and I'll just smooth the layers out. Just let it glide all the way across your fabric. And then after you've done that, you flip it over to where the cotton batting side is face up. So now you have your flannel or your fabric for the back, your cotton batting, and now center the panel piece of fabric 
on the on top of the batting and make sure that there's some of the batting and fabric for the back extending past all four edges and then of course before you do anything else go ahead and smooth out all the, t the entire top of the panel piece now scatter safety pins all over the top and go through all three layers this will keep your fabric from shifting while you're doing your quilting stitches. Here are some suggestions for some quilting stitch patterns. If you want to use a straight stitch, you could do a pattern like this where you just go north and south, then turn your quilt and go east and west, okay? That's one way of doing it. Or you could go on a diagonal. You would go corner to corner, all the way across, and then turn it and go the other way. I use this wavy line stitch. It's called a serpentine stitch. And so again, you can go north and south and east and west. Or if you would want to go on a diagonal, you would start corner to corner like this, and then of course, turn it and then go across the other way. So those are your options for stitch patterns. Before going to your sewing machine, I suggest you roll the quilt up because it will be a lot easier to manipulate the fabric this way. So you would start at one end and just roll it up and then you would slip this under the arm of your sewing machine and then do your stitching, your rows of stitching. If you're going to do your stitch pattern on a diagonal, you would need to roll it going corner to corner and then, of course, slip it under the arm of your machine and then stitch along here. And no matter which way you've got it rolled, you would stitch unroll it a little bit, move over two or three inches, and again, and you can even make them four inches apart, but I recommend you do only three inches. Before you do your quilting stitches, you want to make sure you've got a sewing machine quilting needle. They have a really sharp point, so they easily go through all the layers. And this is quilting thread. It comes on rolls like this. It's a very durable, strong cotton uh, thread. And then also don't forget to put your walking foot on. Now you can do it with a regular presser foot, but the regular presser foot is gonna cause your fabric to stretch and you might get tucks and puckers while doing your quilting. You can purchase these walking feet online. Once you're all set up, then go ahead and slip your quilt underneath the arm here of your sewing machine. And because I'm going at a diagonal, I'm starting over in one corner. Now, if you are a really advanced quilter, you're probably going to start in the middle of the quilt. But because this isn't that big of a quilt and it's a beginner's project, I recommend you just start on one side and move across. So I'm just going to start on one corner and I've selected the serpentine stitch. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my first row. Now I'm lifting my quilt a little bit so that it easily slides through. And then I'm going to move it over about three inches and start back here and I'm unrolling my quilt a little bit make sure my thread is out of the way and do your next row so you would continue doing that all the way across the quilt then when you've got all the way across to do the cross stitching then you would turn it of course the other way and do your lines in the opposite direction. One more thing I want to mention, when you do big quilts or even the small ones, it's a good idea to move your sewing machine away from the wall if that's where your table is. You can move your sewing machine to a dining table or kitchen table and make sure you cover that table with something so you don't scratch it. Because if you're too close to the wall, your quilt is not going to move through smoothly and your stitches will be uneven. 
after completing all of your quilting stitches now it's time to trim off the excess fabric on the back and cotton batting so place your long ruler on the edge of your panel fabric and go around all four sides trimming off the excess fabric to put binding on your quilt the process is the same no matter if you're making a quilt, a pot holder, a placemat, a table runner. Anything in which you want binding on the edge, the process is the same. So take your binding strip and make sure you have it folded and pressed all the way down. Start in the middle on one side and place a pin to hold. Then you're going to go over about five inches and begin pinning along the edge down to the corner. Then you're going to start stitching here and you're going to stitch three eighths of an inch. I know a lot of people like to do a quarter inch. I prefer three eighths because I like it a little thicker and wider because I think it adds more personality to your quilt. So stitch all the way down to the next corner and you're going to stop when you're about when you are three-eighths of an inch away from this side over here this edge so stop three-eighths of an inch away from there then leave your needle down in the down position lift up your presser foot turn your quilt slightly and stitch at a diagonal right into this corner then take it out of your machine Take a hold of the binding and pull it straight out like that. So the binding edge is straight with this edge here. Okay, it's a straight line. Now either put your thumb or your finger there and take a hold of the binding and fold it back over your finger or thumb. And place the folded edge on this edge right here. Then take a pin and place it in that corner. Now continue pinning all the way down this side here. Just keep right on going. Then you're going to again stitch 3 eighths of an inch and you're going to start right here on this fold and stitch all the way down to that corner. Every time you come to a corner you're going to stitch into the corner like you did here and fold your binding exactly the same. When you get to the last corner, go ahead and fold it just like you did all of the other three corners and pin this edge down and go ahead and start stitching three-eighths of an inch from down here, excuse me, from this edge here. Come in, you start on that fold, stitch down to where you started. Now, when you get about five inches away from this point, then you're going to stop, take your quilt out of the machine, overlap your ends, and you're going to uh, overlap by about a half inch. So, go ahead and cut that excess off. Pull the binding ends out and then fold your quilt a little bit like this so that you have both ends out and it'll be easier to bring those binding ends together so unfold the binding ends and you're going to bring front sides together let me get this other one open here so bring front sides together Place some pins there to hold and then stitch one quarter inch along here. Take it out of your machine and finger press this seam open. Then fold your binding back in half, pin it down, and finish stitching three eighths of an inch along this end. Before folding the binding over the edge to the back, one of the things I like to do is to take an iron, and please do this at your ironing board, not on your cutting mat, 
is to press that seam, pushing the binding away from the quilt. So as you fold it over to the back, it folds over much easier. It's very even and very smooth looking. I'm thinking about making this baby quilt into a wall hanging. So if you're considering that, before you fold your binding over to the back, that's when you should put the sleeve on, is just before doing that step. It can be added afterwards, but it looks cleaner and smoother if you do it then. So there is a link at the end of the video that'll show you how to put a sleeve on so that you can insert a small rod through it so you can hang it on the wall. As you fold the binding over to the back, it's real important that you take the folded edge of the binding and pull it past your stitch line. Otherwise, when you go to stitch it down from the top, your needle will not catch it. So make sure you pull it past the stitch line. Now I'm going to show you how to pin your corners, because this is where a lot of people get confused. It's really quite easy. Place a pin on each side of the corner about an inch away. Now take another straight pin and press down and in. Push all the way back to the fold. Fold this over and pin it. You would do that at all four corners. Because this is such a small quilt, I normally would go ahead and pin the binding down on the back on all four edges. Or you could just pin one side if you wanted to and stitch it down. After you've got an edge pinned or all of it pinned, you're going to turn it over to the front and you're going to do stitch in the ditch. And the ditch is where this binding fabric comes right up against my quilt fabric. And you're going to stitch on the yellow here, where my yellow is, that's what I would stitch on, but very close to this pink binding. Use your walking foot because it's an open toe and you'll be able to see exactly where you are. And also your walking foot will easily go over this thick edge. So you would start at one corner and stitch down to the next corner. Leave your needle down and lift up your presser foot, turn your quilt, and stitch down to the next corner. But of course, if you're just pinning one side at a time, then you would stitch from one corner down to the next. As you're stitching the binding on, especially if you're new at doing this, periodically lift it up and make sure your stitches has, have caught this folded edge of the binding. If it has not, that means that your binding is not pulled far enough past your stitch line. To make it easier to pull this through your machine as you're stitching the binding on, I recommend you fold the quilt in half, something like this, not completely to the other edge, and then fold it again and then it's real easy to push this through your sewing machine. Click on the links at the end of this video to see other baby quilt projects that you can do. If you like this video, click on thumbs up. Also, click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red button down there in the lower right hand portion of your screen. Enter your email address and click on that little bell so you receive future email notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl. This is Manny. So glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing.